um, it's not done yet in this curtain wall. Remember that when you're selecting curtain walls, you can select different things. You can select the wall itself. You can select the mullion. Okay. Or uh, we can select the panel. Okay, so if we select this, uh, we filter, we have curtain panel and curtain mullions. I can select the panel. And if I select the panel, uh, then I can change it from uh, glazed or transparent or solid. In this case, this is solid. And uh, this top part is solid. Uh, how can you create uh, another line of mullions here? Uh, because we are doing this Okay, because we don't want to see the slab and we don't want to see what we have underneath uh, between the slab and the false ceiling. If you, if you look at the detail, we have a lot of stuff. Okay, so we have a beam, we have a connection between two different beams, there will be ducts, pipes. So usually we don't want to see that stuff. So where if we are dealing with a curtain wall, uh, we have this opaque curtain wall here and we don't see that. I think we have a detail of the curtain wall here, okay, that's it. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the floor slab. We have a mullion here, and then this is the opaque glass because we don't want to see all the stuff that we have here with the pipes, the lighting, the structure. So this is something that it's, it would be ugly to expose this. And we have thermal insulation and and, and this opaque. A glass panel. Okay, so that's what uh, we are doing. Uh, this and at the top of the building, it's the same. Uh, I don't want to see all the stuff that I have here, so that's why the last panel is opaque. Okay, so I have this mullion. I have to create this mullion, and uh, then I will place an opaque uh, glass here, so it's not transparent. So let's do that. And uh, because here uh, I don't have grid lines, remember if I want to uh, select uh, grid lines in architecture, uh, here we have curtain grids. So if you click curtain grid, if you hover the mouse on a vertical element, we have the curtain grid, and then we create this dashed line. And now uh, if I select this dashed line, I can move it. So I'm going to move it up to the lower part of the, the slab. I can use a line and I can line these elements up. So now the curtain grid is here. And if I have a curtain grid, I can go to mullion. I can select the curtain grid and now the mullion shows up. Uh, at the top, I do have a curtain grid. I don't have to create it because it's the, the, the top part of the curtain wall. So I just uh, click here and I have the mullion. And now this is, okay, so if we look at the detail uh, between this final mullion and this, uh, I need the opaque or the solid element, not the transparent one. So how can we do it? Uh, we have to select everything. We have to filter, select just the curtain panels. And in system panel, I have to select solid. There you go. And... Okay. Uh, I have to do the same thing here. Uh, I select the curtain panels. Okay. And those are solid. Okay, so yeah, they are solid. So now I have... Uh, yeah, so this is the kind of uh, curtain wall that we have here. I'm going to do it again. Uh, remember that uh, when I was selecting this element, I didn't select the storefront. With the storefront, you have uh, mullions, vertical and horizontal mullions. So Revit makes that decision, but I want to design my own building. So I select curtain wall 
I create the wall and this is just a glass wall, a transparent element. And now I can start building in architecture, I can start building the curtain grids. So the curtain grids, again, if you uh, hover the mouse on something horizontal, uh, you have vertical curtain grids. And if you hover the mouse on something uh, vertical, you have a uh, horizontal uh, curtain grids. So the first thing uh, we need this, and uh, we have to line up uh, this grid line uh, to that slab. Okay, so we have the, um, the grid line here, and we have to move it up to this point, and we have to move uh, this one up to this point. Okay, so now I can create a mullion. I can create uh, this mullion here, this mullion there, and this one, and this one. Okay, so this is the opaque and this is the transparent. If I want to be creative with the design, uh, I can use curtain grids, but I can select only one segment. If I select one segment, I create a curtain grid only on that segment. Uh, vertically or horizontally. Okay, so once uh, you have the design on this uh, yeah, so if you are happy with the design, now you can create the mullions and we can create a mullion here, mullion there. So all the grid lines that we have created can be turned into uh, so uh, at the corner, we always need a mullion. And at the end of the curtain wall, even, even this tiny one, uh, we need a mullion here uh, at the end and at the beginning of the curtain wall. And I might need another opaque layer here. So I'm going to go to curtain grid and I need a line here. And now I have to move this curtain grid up to this point and I can create a mullion. Well, this and this are not lined up, so I'm going to use a line. I can select the curtain grid, come on. Yeah, I select the curtain grid and that curtain grid and now they are lined up. Okay. And, oh, the same thing here. Do I have a, come on, I don't have another curtain grid. Your curtain grid. It's because I have the mullions. A filter. I'm going to select only the mullions. I'm going to hide in view category. And I think now I can create a curtain grid. Yes, so when you have the mullions, it's more difficult to create the curtain grid. So you can create all the curtain grids. And when you have, when you have them, you can uh, create the mullions. I think that will work better.
Um, so now I have to unhide all this. Unhide select mullions. Unhide this category. And now we have all the mullions here and I can create uh, this one. And yeah, everything. What's next? Uh, I want to select all these panels and I want to turn them into a solid thing. So I select everything, filter. I select only curtain panels, apply. And I turn them into solid. Okay, so now all these are solid and I need to do the same with this part. So select this, filter only curtain panels and turn them into solid panels. Well, those are solid, but yeah, everything is solid, but they don't show up as solid because probably there's something, yeah, it's not updated. But yeah, uh, so what would be next? Uh, what if we want to create a, an openable window or a door or something like that? Um, now uh, I have to select this panel and I can turn this into a window or a door. Uh, but to do that, I have to insert a new family. So if you go to, Insert, load family. Uh, we have a curtain panel by pattern, curtain wall panels. Let's go to curtain wall panels. Uh, we have empty, we have glazed, and we have solid. Okay, so this is not, is it in Windows? Okay, in Windows, uh, we have... Uh, Curtain wall, uh, this is not. So there should be like a, a curtain wall door. Hmm? That's it. There are two kinds of um, of windows here. We have the well, we have the curtain wall, fixed windows. Uh, if I select a panel in the curtain wall, pressing tab, come on, the panel. Uh, if I have inserted that family, this uh, door, this door curtain wall, I can create a window here. But then we have the windows, uh, the typical windows on the on those walls. Okay, so in this building, we have the curtain walls, but then we have windows. But the windows go from the floor up to the ceiling. So on that detail, uh, that still beam that we have on the external finish, on the pre-external finish, that is the limit to the of the windows uh, that we have in this building too, okay? Um, so, we are not going to show that uh, steel beam here, but we can keep uh, the, the edge of this slab, okay, so from from this view, uh, we know that we interrupt the brick wall because there is a horizontal line. Uh, in this building, the horizontal line is a steel beam. Uh, but if we have only the edge of the of the slab, that will go well. Uh, but now if we want to insert windows uh, like this, we need to insert the right height of the window. And the window goes from the ceiling to the 
let's take a look at the okay uh, so those are the windows they go from the the floor slab up to the the roof slab but we do have this opaque part because we it's the same thing uh, that we have in the curtain wall okay so we don't want to show all the stuff that we have here in the false ceiling so that's why we have this opaque uh, part of the of the window uh, what does Revit do? Well, first we need to know uh, the section because the window has to go from uh, this level to the bottom of that slab. So first we need to take that height. Okay, so we go from level one, but it goes up to the bottom part of the slab. So let me take that. annotate uh, so I want to take this distance from the bottom doesn't let me do it well I can select this and uh, if I edit type the width or the thickness is five inches okay so if this is level one and the elevation is zero and that's level 11 and the elevation is zero and this is five inch. No, this is level, sorry, this is level 14. And this is a five inch. Default thickness, uh, five inches. Yeah, so it's a five inch slab. So it's uh, 14 minus five inches. So it would be 13 feet and seven inches. Yeah, something like that. So the the height of this uh, window has to be 13 feet and seven inches. So we have to go to architecture window. Uh, we can use a fixed window, but there is it's more than a fixed window. So what kind of windows we have here? All of them are terrible. Let's see what families we have in windows. Uh, doors. No, I want windows. Uh, let's see if there is something. Okay, something like that. Um. Let's keep this in, yeah, I think this is the one they have used. And uh, all of them are, okay, so we have something like this, good, or something like that. Something like this, no. Okay, so let's use, let's start with one of those. Okay, let's start with this one, window, owning, variable. See what happens, open. Okay. And uh, I'm going to try to insert this uh, here. We're working with, uh, with this northern facade. So if we have a window here, okay. So that's the starting point. Uh, first thing, we have to edit this type and uh, the width, we can keep it, but the height, uh, let's work with the rough height. So that is 13 feet and seven inches. Apply, see what happens. And okay, so it doesn't work. It's not bad, but the window sill. Rough height, whoa. Okay, so the fault seal height, the seal is the distance between the beginning of the window and the floor. So by default is uh, zero. So I'm going to type, uh, by default is three but in my case, it, it, it want to be zero. Um, 
So apply, okay. And it doesn't pay me any attention, okay. So can I move it down? Yes, I can move it down. Okay. We are getting there. Um, but now look at this. I would like to line up this mullion uh, with this one because I think this is what uh, happens in the in the elevation. Yes, yeah, so you see that this line is the same, and that's the opaque uh, panel. Let me see if I can do that. Um, I can't select that line. Can I line up this and this? Yes, I can, but then all the window changes, you see? Okay, so that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, can I edit the type and change that? Uh, this is the opening default seal ceiling, seal height is zero. The opening window width, the fixed window width, the transom height. That would be the option, but I can't change it. You see? So I can't change this transom uh, height. The transom is uh, this element or that element. So I can't change that. Edit type, uh, fixed window width. I can change this. For example, the window, the fixed window width is this. If I type here three and I apply, it changes, but it changes the, the whole width. Uh, the opening window width by default is six. If I type three, something happens. Um, let me see if I can understand what the hell is going on here. Okay. Yeah, but apparently, look at this. I changed the opening window width to five. And it changes the fixed window width. Okay, so, but I can't change one uh, without changing the other. And for sure, I can't uh, change the, the transom uh, height. So that will request, yeah. So if I double click on the window, here we have the the family. Okay, so on that family, maybe I can uh, change different things, but that will be too complicated. Okay, so I can edit everything, but if I edit this tra this transom, that's the sketch. Anyway, um. I can always change the family, but I need to know the philosophy behind this family, and I don't know it, okay? So, I can change the sketch. This is four, uh, but that's the extrusion. Okay, so there are always ways to change the family or to create your own family. But uh, I need to know how this has been done and I don't know it. Okay, so forget about this. Um, I don't mind, I would have to, I would like to have control 
over this window, but it's quite difficult. I can try something different. I can try, uh, I can work with a storefront here or with a curtain wall. But if I want to work with a curtain wall, then I can control the everything. I can control my grid lines. But uh, if I work with a, a wall, with a curtain wall, it's it doesn't work like Windows. I can't insert a curtain wall here. Uh, what I have to do is to go to level one. So on level one, uh, we have the window here. I'm going to uh, hide this in view. Uh, this is the window that I have just inserted, okay? So if I want to insert here a curtain wall, I have to uh, split the curtain wall. And now I can decide the width of my, sorry, I'm going to use split, not split with gap. So I split the element here, I split the element there, and now I get rid of this wall. If I do that, I have the opening. Okay, and I can control the width of my opening by moving the wall. Um, and now I can select a curtain wall and I can place the curtain wall here. Okay. If I do this, now my curtain wall um, I can uh, adapt the height of my curtain wall to the the bottom of the slab. And now I can work uh, with this curtain wall. Uh, the same thing I did uh, the original curtain wall. I can create my own uh, grid lines. So we can go to architecture, uh, select uh, grid lines. I can create the first one. I can create a second one here, and I can create the third one, but only at one segment uh, here. Okay, so you see that I have created my own grid lines. Uh, well, okay, so I have uh, a grid line here, another there, and there's a third grid line there, and then the openable window is like that. Okay, so let's do this. I have a grid line here. I have another grid line there. And I have another, what the hell is this? Oh, that's the grid. It's not the grid line. Sorry. Okay, so that's the grid line. That's the grid line. And I need another one. Architecture. Curtain grid. Here, example. And now I need that one segment, only the openable window. Like this. And now I can create mullions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now with this one, I have exactly the design uh, I want. Okay, so I can insert this one. Probably it's easier but I can't change the design. But if this design goes well, and I think this is what I would do, I would uh, keep this window because it doesn't look bad. But if I want to uh, have exactly the same design that I have here with one, two, three, four, five horizontal mullions and two vertical mullions with this openable window here, I can do it. And then I can 
change the opacity of this. If I filter and select the curtain panel, I can make it solid. And if I select this panel here, I can make it solid. And if I want to insert a window, again, I can select just this panel and I can insert the curtain wall, no, the double storefront. There you go. So now it looks more Oh, yeah, it looks like uh, this thing here. Okay, so either way, I don't mind. Uh, uh, but when we use a window family, uh, there are, uh, we can change the width, we can change the height. And probably if we edit the family and we know uh, how to edit the family, uh, we can change the distance between the mullion and the, the bottom part or the top part. But uh, if we want to create something specific and we don't want to rely on uh, Revit elements, uh, I think the best option is to create a, a curtain wall, but uh, curtain walls, don't work like windows. In window, we need a host, we need a wall, and then I can insert the window. For the curtain wall, I have to create first a gap in the wall, and then I have to insert a curtain wall here. Okay, so there are two different ways to uh, deal with this. I don't mind what you do, but there are two ways uh, to create those windows here. Okay, so again, you have to show me that at least uh, we have this curtain wall hanging from the slabs here and that you can create windows uh, like this. I don't mind if you exactly follow this pattern. It's uh, You see that those have different widths. Yeah, so all the windows are different, I think. Well, this and this seem and this, okay. So the narrow windows, they seem to be the, the same, so you can copy, but this and this is different. And here, these <laughs> windows that we have on the first floor are different. Uh, how can we do this? How can we do that detail? So this is a steel beam. And um, if we want to create that steel uh, beam there, um, Probably the best option is to create a level. So if I copy this level and I create this level here, uh, I'm going to name this level eight. Is eight one inch and 11 30 seconds. Uh, but that's level eight. Uh, so now I need to create a structural beam there. So I can go to level one. And in structure, uh, I select the beam. And that beam, I'm going to place it uh, here because I'm not sure uh, where the beam will be. And then on the 3D view, Okay, the beam is here on level one. Uh, so now I can change the reference level. If I edit the work plane, I place it on level eight and now the, the beam will be there. And uh, now I have to move this beam towards the wall see it 
Uh, do I have any other options? Yeah, I think I need something smaller. No, this is a concrete. No, I don't have any options. Yeah, probably I should insert uh, something that it's not as thick as this one. And uh, now, well, look at this. I want the beam to be embedded in the wall. Okay. Uh, so now it's not the case. So if I go to the top view, if I want the beam to be lined up with the wall, So the beam is here, but I don't see the beam through the wall. Okay, and in the, the original, look at this. Lost. Yep, there you go. You see how we're splitting hairs here, okay? But if we want this detail, uh, what I can do is to edit the profile of the wall. Okay, so if I edit the profile of the wall, I can uh, trace the shape of the beam here. Okay, now I split chamfer. And if I do this, yep. I will see the beam inserted in the middle of the wall. Okay. Is it worth it? But anyway, if you want to do it, uh, there there is a way to do it. So, uh, what would I do? I just insert a window, and uh, if you get paid enough. And then you can start designing everything, all the windows, you start designing those details. But those, believe me, those details, it's, this is the kind of things that make a project better uh, because anyone can have a wall and insert a window and that's it. But, uh, okay, so, but there is a lot of thought into this. So the window goes from something from the slab up to the ceiling, okay. But I don't want to show everything that I have uh, in the ceiling because it's uh, the pipes, the structure. I don't want to see that. So I create an opaque element. Then I design the fixed part, the openable part. And then to emphasize uh, this horizontal line, I create a beam here. But this beam is embedded in the, uh, in the brick wall. And I have this detail here, okay? So those are the details that make the building unique, okay? So anyone can uh, create a Revit wall and insert a Revit window and get away with it. Okay, do it. But if you want to do something special, you have to put some thought on these kind of details, but it takes a lot of time. Anyway, uh, I think uh, because sometimes we don't get to this level of detail because we don't know how to do it. So this shouldn't be an excuse. Okay. So, oh, I don't know how to do this. So I, I won't do it. There's a way to do it. It takes effort, but 
mm, yeah, so those are small details that add value to the to the project. Okay, so we are uh, creating. This is not a typical Revit storefront. We have created our our own curtain wall. Uh, we have opaque uh, solid panels. We have transparent panels. Um. Okay, so we're we're getting there. And uh, again, show me that uh, I don't mind if you do this or this. Show me that you just can open different window types. Okay, so this is a curtain wall and it's hanging from the structure. This is not a curtain wall, although we use the curtain wall tool to create the, uh, the openings. And then it's up to you if you want to do this, uh, go ahead. If you don't want to, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, uh, so are we ready to create the details? Uh, take a look at the section. Okay, so now this section has more things on it. Uh, we have mullions, we have the... Uh, the floor deck, this is the structure. Uh, there is something that we haven't done yet and we probably uh, should, okay. So um, on the Revit, no, where's the Revit file? Here, on the Revit file, the 3D view, uh, we don't have, this is open, okay? So we have to close this gap here because we are looking at the concrete slab and all the steel structure. If we go outdoors, uh, we don't see this. If we are underneath this overhang, we look up, uh, we don't see all that stuff. Uh, we have like a false ceiling. So is there uh, is there an easy way to create a false ceiling there? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, we are... Um, but first, we I have to remember what level uh, was that. Okay, so that's the level of the false ceiling. It's level uh, 11. So on level 14, uh, we have a false ceiling here. Well, we have a false ceiling in the rest of the building, but especially this outdoor overhang, uh, we need a ceiling. So we can go to architecture, uh, ceiling, and uh, we can place automatic ceiling. No, we'd better uh, use the sketch. And here on level, I can select level 11. This is where the false ceiling will be. And high offset, zero. No offset, okay? And now we can trace the outline of uh, the exterior wall. and the overhand. Like this, be careful because it has to be a closed loop. So we have to trim this here. Then we click okay. And let's take a look at this. Yeah, so now we have a false ceiling here and we are hiding uh, this gap, okay? Um, we only notice, uh, you have to do the same thing here, by the way, okay? Uh, we only notice this if we have a perspective Okay, so if we place a camera uh, here, okay, in this case, we we see the, the false ceiling. So if we are taking this screenshot, uh, we, we need to hide this with, uh, with the false ceiling. But I think it's quite nice. Sweet. Okay, uh, so another option, uh, the false ceiling. And with this, we hide 
all the stuff that we have outdoors, the structure and all the pipes and ducts that we might have there. Uh, what about this? Okay, uh, so here we have the, again, uh, we have the, the storefront or the, the curtain wall, sorry, the curtain wall. Uh, uh, what happens there? So according to this detail, this one, okay. Um, now we have to start thinking, is it worth doing this as a 3D object? I think it would be too much, okay? So we will do this as a 2D as a call out, and then uh, we will start with the 3D object, and then we will start replacing things uh, with the 2D drawings, uh, because I think it would be uh, way easier than modeling all that stuff with the 3D view. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the storefront is not just like here. We need like a small uh, parapet here. Um, okay, so let's do, this as a 3D object, because I think for the Revit, if you want to take screenshots or something here, I think it will go well if you create uh, something there. So uh, what level is that? It's uh, the top level. Okay, so it's level 28. Okay, so this is the level 28, and then we have the roof. And this roof is a generic roof, 12 inches. Uh, so we have to create uh, this parapet from level 28 plus one and up to level 31, because that's the top level of the, of the curtain wall. Okay, so let's go to level uh, 28. If it doesn't show up here, we have to go to view, plan views, floor plan, and level 28 is there. Okay, so we just have the outline and we're going to create a wall, architecture, wall. Um, it doesn't have to be this exterior wall. It can be a generic eight, so a generic wall, but the base constraint is level 28. The base offset is one foot and the top level is level 31, okay? And now we can uh, select the outline of this. I usually don't pay a lot of attention to the outline. So what I do is to uh, align. And that works. That's easier. At least for me, if we uh, line up things rather than tracing a complicated outline. Uh, sometimes we can do it because the shape is complicated. Okay. So, and okay. Well, I have to keep going, okay? But now if we look at the 3D view, we see, we don't see just the, the, the curtain wall. I see that there is something. Like this. Okay, so that uh, will work. So uh, create this outline around this and uh, we have a parapet. Again, we only notice uh, this if we take a screenshot on level 28, if I place a camera here. So 
uh, I see that if I'm uh, at the edge of this slab, I don't fall. So there is something that protects me from uh, from falling. Okay, so that's why if we have this outline around. But again, are we going to take a screenshot here? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have a lot of information now. We have all the structural elements. We have this uh, typical wall. Remember that we edited the type and we edited the structure. Uh, we have brick, air layer, rigid insulation around six inches. Uh, then we have a membrane. A membrane doesn't have any thickness. The structure is the concrete masonry unit. And then we have the metal and the finish, the gypsum. So this is what we have in this building. That's the detail, okay? Uh, that's the wall. Uh, then we created uh, curtain walls using uh, our own design, uh, changing the mullions, the grid lines of the curtain wall, changing the opacity of some elements, inserting windows. So there are a lot of stuff here. Uh, then for these windows here, we can use a regular window family. Uh, this is the least uh, horrendous window that we can find in all the, the Revit families. If we want to design our own window, uh, we can edit this family, but it's way too complicated. So I'm doing, I'm creating a curtain wall. And with the curtain wall, again, I can uh, create my own grid lines. I can select the material, uh, transparent or solid material. And uh, what else did we do? Uh, oh, the false ceiling. And this parapet. So, yeah, something that prevents us from falling. Okay. So, what will be next? Um, once we are done with this, and I think this is a good detail level for the 3D object, uh, now the next step is to uh, work with the callouts. Uh, if we go to the section final sheet, we have the callouts here. If we open the callouts, poof, there's a lot of work ahead of us to make this callout something uh, decent. Okay, so that's what Revit has to offer. And the goal is this. Okay, so next week we will turn this into this. But we will do that by using uh, 2D uh, detail items. Uh, remember the... Yeah, the same thing we did with uh, with this file, okay? So we will use most of these families that we have already uploaded. And uh, we have the windows, we have the, the steel frames, uh, we have all these that is the same as uh, the detail that we have here. We have the thermal insulation, we have steel beams. Uh, the only thing new, probably, it's this curtain wall mullion. Uh, that we have to add these uh, horizontal elements. But other than that, if you did uh, that detail, we can use most of the details that we have already done for this. Uh, now we have a different section. We don't have the concrete masonry unit. Uh, we have this curtain wall. Uh, this is the opaque and this is a transparent curtain wall with a triple glazing. Uh, but look at this detail here. Uh, what Revit has so far is uh, this. Okay. So that's the mullion side. Um, so that's why we have to add some details on this callout in the second one, this one. So we have to turn that into, yeah. That's the false ceiling that we have just did. And that's the opaque part, that's the transparent part. Oh, and by the way, I didn't do 
Okay, you see that uh, this is a structural hanger, uh, whatever. Uh, we didn't do that on the structural schematic view on level, uh, okay, so we created this steel column, uh, that's the steel beam, but there are things hanging, okay, there are elements that are connecting This. If you go to that grid space, uh, there is a steel plate, something very thin, and this is hanging. Okay, so all this overhang is hanging from this element. Let's do it uh, quickly. So we have to go to level 14. And here uh, we need something. Uh, how can we do that? Uh, we can go to structure. Beam, it's not, no, structure, sorry, a column. Uh, here we have this W-shaped column, but we don't need that. So let me go to insert. Uh, oh, point. Insert, load family. Um, I think that would be in structural columns steel and we have channel uh, we have uh, double c white flange pipe round bars square bars uh Let's use a square bar, open. And here we have different options. One inch by one inch. Uh, let's use, okay, something like that, 1.6 by 1.6. And let's insert this guy here. Oof, it's too small. Well, as always, Revit does what the Revit feels like uh, because the top level has to be level 28 and uh, uh, this is, goes from level 14. Uh, Okay, so it's here, but can we edit type and can I change the width to something like uh, four inches? Yeah, but I have to change the other direction. So I'm going to change the height uh, five inches. Yeah, that looks. If you go there, uh, you will see that there is like a plate. It's a uh, well, there are two plates actually, but it's like a rectangle, a very thin rectangle, and it's there. Okay, so on level fourteen, I can copy this. Uh, here. So if I take a picture of level 14, yes, we'll see that element there. Uh, there will be a bench. You know that there is a bench here. Uh, and this is the beam. And if you go there, we have the concrete column. And then from the beam, something is hanging and it's holding uh, that element. So that's important. It shows up in this detail. Okay, so that's the plate, that's the bench. And this is the connection between the structural slab and this thing. 
And yeah, so that's the, the element that we have just uh, created. And since this is facing south, if we activate the sun path and the shadows, yeah, so that's the effect that we usually have on a day, on a sunny day, like today. Okay, so that, that would be the the effect that we have in this in that space. 